pardon me for being selfish enough to actually like voice this point as much as I do sincerely believe in it, but like I am talking about everything going on with Israel's genocide is just so grim and consistent. We all know what this story is going to be, right? So a little while ago, Hamas proposed a total and complete ceasefire. Hamas would release all of the hostages and uh, in return, the uh, Israelis would release a bunch of Palestinian prisoners they have. Because remember, of course, that uh, Israel keeps far, far more political prisoners of Palestinians than Hamas does. You know, Israel rejected that offer because they don't want a ceasefire. They want to finish uh, ethnically cleansing the uh, Gaza Strip. Kamala Harris is saying that there should be a six-week ceasefire, which seems to be a position that nobody wants. Israel doesn't want to stop, but there are some, uh, there, there seems to be some like interest in a six week ceasefire from Israel because, you know, they can keep the killing going in six weeks, you know, they can, in six weeks, they can, you know, they can get back at it. But Hamas has rejected this uh, because they don't want a six week ceasefire. They want a permanent ceasefire. I heard there was a new offer of a ceasefire from Israel. What's bad with their offer? Six weeks. I must address the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Whoa. What we are seeing every day in Gaza is devastating. We have seen reports of families eating leaves or animal feed, women giving birth to malnourished babies with little or no medical care, and children dying from malnutrition and dehydration. As I have said many times, too many innocent Palestinians have been killed. Whoa. And just a few days ago, we saw hungry, desperate people approach aid trucks, simply trying to secure food for their families. After yeah, here we go. This, is, uh, this was the Hamas proposed ceasefire that Netanyahu called delusional. Hamas proposed a ceasefire of four and a half months during which all hostages would be free. Israel would withdraw, withdraw its troops from Gaza and an agreement would be made to end the war, which Netanyahu called delusional. Uh, when Zionists tell you that this whole thing is about protecting the hostages, just keep in mind, Israel said we will continue endangering the hostages as long as it means we get to continue the war. Hamas proposed the six-week ceasefire proposal. That's the offer the U.S. is backing. Oh, have they have they backed down? Is Hamas proposing this one as well? All I know is the last one that uh, Israel rejected. Uh, Hamas six-week ceasefire. Because I know Hamas rejected a previous ceasefire offer. Six-week ceasefire basically accepted by Israel waiting on Hamas. Why, if it was proposed by Hamas, why would it say waiting on Hamas? This clearly wasn't... This clearly isn't proposed by Hamas, or they wouldn't be waiting on Hamas. Weeks of nearly no aid reaching northern Gaza. And they were met with gunfire and chaos. Our hearts break for the victims of that horrific tragedy and for all the innocent people in Gaza who are suffering from what is clearly a humanitarian catastrophe. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Got my People big my foam are finger up. Starving. The conditions are inhumane. And our common genuinely like incomprehensible how uncharismatic she is, right? Like it really is wild. Humanity compels us to act. As President Joe Biden said on Friday, the United States is committed to urgently get more life-saving assistance to innocent Palestinians in need. I will repeat, the threat of Hamas poses to the people of Israel uh -huh. must be eliminated. Uh -huh. And given the immense scale of suffering in Gaza, there must be an immediate... Not one mention of Gazans being killed through military means, very curious. Yep, every time it, when, uh, when, when Kamala Harris or any liberal talks about what's happening in the Gaza Strip, they talk about it like a natural disaster hit. Seriously, their language is 
is exactly the same as if there was like a tsunami that hit the Gaza Strip. That's it. This this horrible humanitarian crisis, you know, we must help them and provide aid. No agency or autonomy being given, you know, not even saying like we're met with gunfire, not, you know, we're gunned down by IDF soldiers. It's insane. Suffering, conditions, yeah, yeah, yeah. Humanitarian disaster. Uh, it's it's insane. This is like the same thing that local uh, newspapers do when cops shoot a kid, but like worse. Like this is more that this is like an advanced form of that, you know. Ceasefire. Yeah. For at least the next six weeks, which is what the lunatics in the background. What the f fire? Yeah. For at least the next six weeks which is what is currently on the table. This will get the hostages out and get a significant amount of aid in. This would allow us to build something more enduring, to ensure Israel is secure, and to respect the right of the Palestinian people to dignity, freedom, and self-determination. Yep. Look, just remember that any ceasefire that Israel agrees to right now in this current environment is one that doesn't get in the way of their genocide. Israel wants the genocide, so they're not going to accept any ceasefire that would get in the way of them doing the genocide. Like, the only way to change that would be for America to put real pressure. Just remember, Hamas proposed a full-on 135-day ceasefire to end of war, release all hostages, blah de blah and Netanyahu called it delusional because Netanyahu's real goal here is total military conquest of the Gaza Strip and the ousting of all Palestinians. Like, again, he called it delusional. Like, what is that? Wh how transparent does that make his aims in the Gaza Strip? A three-stage truce process that would see hostages and prisoners released on both sides. Each stage would last for 45 days. Netanyahu and top Israeli officials have repeatedly stated Israeli troops will not be ordered to pull back until Hamas is destroyed. So, like, they, they say this is about the hostages, this is about the hostages, but it's like, it's obviously not. In return... Hamas wants Israel to release 1,500 Palestinians being held in Israeli jails, including all women, children, and elderly people, and send humanitarian aid trucks and fuel trucks into Gaza daily. Temporary homes, tents, and displaced Palestinians in Gaza must be allowed to freely return to their homes with no barriers. Delusional. Do you believe the hostages are providing any kind of leverage at this point? Are they not just providing Israel an excuse? Oh, right, right now, like the hostages, they're, they're basically hostages for both sides. Israel doesn't want those hostages back. If Netanyahu had all of them back, he wouldn't be able to use them as an excuse to continue the genocide, you know? He wants them to stay over there. Uh, he clearly doesn't give a shit if they get killed or starved to death because he's starving the whole Palestinian population, which affects the hostages too. He could find an excuse? Yeah, sure. I mean, of course he could. But uh, it doesn't mean that it's still not a convenient one for the for the meantime. So should Hamas release them purely for tactical advantages? Well, I don't think it's good for Hamas to keep hostages, like, morally, so yes. Though honestly, like, with the IDF being what it is, who knows, the IDF might- It's possible those hostages are safer being kept as hostages, the IDF could just shoot them, you know? Like, look, the Israelis have more or less accepted this six-week ceasefire proposal, which includes the six-week ceasefire, as well as the release of Hamas, by Hamas, of hostages considered vulnerable, which includes the sick, the wounded, the elderly, and women, said the official. So, like, just men, I guess, are staying behind, you know, so you still have them to use as an excuse. The Israeli population apparently wants Hamas destroyed more than getting the hostages back. That doesn't surprise me. The survey found 40% of Israelis would prioritize eradicating Hamas, with 32% preferring the release of the hostages. The question apparently proved difficult for many to answer, with 28% of respondents saying they could not say at all. Among Jews, the percentage of people who believed destroying Hamas had, been pre had to be prioritized, 47%, was almost double the number of those who believed freeing the hostage should take precedence, 25%. Whew. Israel is also going to use Ramadan as an excuse for leveling Gaza. Ramadan begins at sundown on March 10th. Yeah. They do like taking advantage of their, uh, their, their, their moments of opportunity, don't they? Remember when they bombed Rafah and killed a bunch of civilians uh, right as the Super Bowl kicked off? And then they played a pro-Israeli ad at the Super Bowl. What is this? U.S. Pro... Six... Oh, from Cud News Network. I don't know if this is uh, reliable. Cuds. Six U.S. pro-Israel House of Representatives returned from an Israel trip stating Israel's Netanyahu has, quote, utter disregard for Palestinian lives. All right. 
Is there like, is it literally just an image? Is there not an article attached to this with any additional context? No? Okay. I don't try. I've never trusted. Yeah. Is there a significant section of the Democratic Party that would not vote for Biden if he did a 180 on Israel-Palestine? Like, even if we put aside morality, it seems like bad politics. It does now because he's walking back on a precedent, right? If he had been consistent from the beginning, let... Let's let's leave morality to the side. Let's just talk about Biden and electability, okay? So October 7th happens. Biden wakes up and hears about it. And boy, does it look bad. This is an unwinnable situation politically because you can basically only really go two directions. Like nuance tends to get bled out when it comes to foreign policy. So you can either be like supportive of Israel's inevitable campaign against Hamas, or you can be, you know, more moderate, peaceful, don't do this, blah, blah, right? And as time goes on, obviously you get more of an opportunity to sort of warn against what Israel is doing. The problem is, is that the administration had a choice to make at that pivotal moment, which direction they were going to take. Now, right off the bat on October 7th, there was only one thing that Biden could do and say, wow, that's horrible. Because it was, a bunch of civilians got killed. Obviously the IDF blundered and f***ed up and made a bunch of mistakes and killed innocent people themselves. And there's a lot to tear about the IDF over, but from Biden's perspective as president, the only thing he can actually do in that moment is say, wow, that sucks, Kamas, right? Obviously. So Israel retaliates, Israel attacks Hamas, uh, you know, and, uh, and of course with Hamas, like the entirety of the Palestinian population in the Gaza Strip. And Biden should have known right there Man, if I take the side of Israel and get really chauvinistic about it, Netanyahu is going to take this too far. He should have known. Netanyahu has been a lunatic for decades. Netanyahu is not going to engage in a measured response, and this is not going to be over quickly. He, he was a controversial, much disliked, authoritarian fascist with ethno-nationalist tendencies who had been looking for an excuse to crack down on the Palestinians as a way of bolstering his reputation as a strongman. He is going to take advantage of this, and it's going to get bloody. That's the only way it could really go. And if we're just talking politically, like political expediency, Biden should have realized that and he should have taken the more moderate route at first. One that talks about the greater peace, uh, a desire for, you know, uh, a, a mutual and lasting peace in Israel, in the Middle East broadly, a way to like reach across the aisle and like find what both the Palestinian people and the Israeli people want. He will always be anti-Hamas. Of course, there is no other route he can take politically on that on, on that side of things. But if he had been more careful with his language to begin with, there would have been people who would call who would have called him, you know, anti-Israel, pro-Hamas, whatever. Sure. The issue is those people who before, uh, you know, would have called him pro-Hamas, anti-Israel, are now doing that by not being as full-throatedly pro-genocide as Netanyahu is. That was never a winnable group, because invariably, you're going to alienate some portion of your electorate by taking either route, right? Now, there's no way for Biden to be as psychotic about killing Palestinians as Netanyahu, which means that he's always going to end up alienate, like, APAC, you know, core portions of the electorate. Like there's always going to be an element of like radical far right Zionism that will never go behind what he is or what he says or what he does. But at the same time, you know, there's also the fact that if he did even try to go in that direction, he would alienate the largely egalitarian or somewhat egalitarian democratic voter base. So what the is Biden supposed to do? He should have been more moderate from the beginning. He set himself up for this from the very beginning because now any kind of moderate behavior from him is going to be hypocritical as f you know? He was he was preventing his own State Department officials from using the term ceasefire, like he's been providing cover for the Israeli government this entire time. So now it looks really f bad and hypocritical for him to waffle even a little bit. Now, he yeah, he, he smashed his own cock and balls with a rock for no reason. If he had from the beginning, been more careful and more moderate, maybe, maybe he could walk this political tightrope with minimal damage. But right now, he's already taking hits, you know? Uh, over 100,000 uncommitted votes in Michigan. Like, it's there are already serious problems brewing, and they're only going to get worse. We're not even near the election yet. And it's not even, they haven't even begun the ground invasion of Rafah. Every indicator we have suggests that this is going to get a lot bloodier very soon. But, you know, the Dems of sleep walked into it because they didn't have a realistic long-term assessment of how much of a optical, uh, you know, uh, anvil 
Netanyahu would end up being. And keep in mind, I'm not talking morality here. Morality, we all know where my position is. Like, we know where I stand on this. I'm only talking political optics. What's that term? Once again, it wasn't just wrong, it was a mistake. That's what Biden's been doing. It Not just wrong, but a mistake. It would have been better for him and the world if he had taken a better and more sensible position on this. But he didn't. He didn't. What's the path forward now? Have you ever read the manga Berserk? Unimaginable suffering, okay? Uh, torment, uh, uh, misery uh, is what I'm saying. That's it, he's just afraid of looking hypocritical? No, it's not him being afraid. If he turncoated on the position now, it would legitimately politi be politically disastrous. Um, it's not just a matter of like him being afraid of looking bad or whatever. Like the optical harm, the, the, the electoral harm, would be much greater now if he took a position that he should have taken from the beginning. You know, he, he set himself up for this. He could have used the flower massacre as a moment to turn his opinion around. Yeah, he could have, at least a little bit, but or, well, yeah, worse than a crime, it is a mistake. Yeah, exactly. Biden is a committed Zionist, Vosh. His limit is very high. That is true. Biden is a committed Zionist. Jesus Christ, Vosh, stop sugarcoating it. I don't know what you mean. So what should he do now? Just shut up? No, I think that there are, like, small incremental ways that he could, like, adjust his position on Israel that would be both morally right and politically beneficial to him in the long run. Morally speaking, again, he should, like, decry Israel for its genocidal crimes, uh, though that wouldn't be very politically expedient at this point. It is true, though, that, like, purely through inertia, he has already done a lot of irreversible damage to his ability to be any kind of good influence or win the upcoming election in this regard. So, yeah, it's not great. Is it not wishful thinking to say that if he just adopted your position on Israel, he'd be doing a better politically? My position on Israel is not electorally viable, but if he had adopted a more measured and cautious attitude on the conflict from the get-go, uh, well, from the beginning of the, the war, on October 7th, probably would be in a better position right now. He could do the unimaginable and apologize in an honest way. Uh, the politically unthinkable. Would being seen as a hypocrite really be that much worse than maintaining the current course? Depends on the severity of the hypocrisy. It, 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 if it, a full turnabout, potentially, yeah. I don't think that the Biden administration's support for genocide is like a non-issue the way some liberals dishonestly pretend that it is. But I do think that it's probably something the American people can, you know, get used to. We're Americans. It's not the first time. I think that, uh, you know, the, the sickness at the heart of the, uh, the, the, the angloid skull has a dimple that allows it to sort of compartmentalize stuff like this effectively, at least to some extent. That's changing with time, I think, maybe. This has been handled so poorly for so long. The idea, like, we, we, are, we are essentially at this point, like, Biden's reputation is basically, like, being partially determined by Netanyahu because he has, despite the fact that Netanyahu is a well-known lunatic and crank and unpopular in Israel, the Biden administration has offered him essentially zero real criticism. And now in the minds and eyes of a lot of Americans, Netanyahu is a good judge of character on both military matters and on what does or does not constitute good support of Israel. You know, like, can you imagine at, at, at this point, like, Biden, the most powerful man in the world, has to be worried about what Netanyahu, a crank lunatic ethno-nationalist, has to say about him. Like Jesus, the Ayatollah is less of a lunatic than Netanyahu, and he rules over far, far more people, and he's more popular with his people. But does Biden wake up every morning terrified the Ayatollah might call him, I don't know, one head of the many heads of the great Satan? Probably not, no. You can write that off. Uh, I think it's pretty like politically defensible to write that off. But with Netanyahu, no, the Biden administration has positioned him in such a sense that his word is actually meaningful. Do you think the Dems are perhaps trying to try this, uh, turn this around with Kamala? Maybe like make Kamala the more moderate voice. I'm not sure. It's possible. Does Netanyahu favor Trump? Yes. Biden probably banked on Netanyahu crashing and burning, but oh well. Yeah, that was a stupid belief. Like, that was a really stupid ahistorical belief for him to have. If, if that was actually the motivating force behind his, his, his maneuvering around the situation, that was really f dumb. Why does he favor Trump? Because Trump is also a fascist? Fascist? Why would, Trump doesn't give a shit about Palestinians. Not to say Biden does, but the Republican Party doesn't give as much of a shit about Palestinians and likes ethno-nationalism a lot more than the Democrats and the Democrat voters do. 
as bad as Biden is, Trump would be even better for Netanyahu. I still maintain there's an incredibly slim possibility that Biden ends up, sorry, not Biden, that Trump ends up having his ego inflamed by Netanyahu in some way and actually ends up doing like the most aggressive anti-Israel action in the history of the American presidency purely on ego and not for any other reason. Like Netanyahu is a really abrasive and arrogant guy. It's just very possible that at some point that Trump like, Trump is like walking around the ruins of, of Gaza City, you know, surrounded by Secret Service with Netanyahu in a tour and he's like um our bombs our bombs would have hit a lot better than these I don't know Netanyahu I just I, I, just some stupid waffling bullshit and Netanyahu would have like scolded him and Trump would have been fuming about it and he would have gotten back home and immediately like brought back the ambassador to Israel and like cut ties or something I don't know I hey, that's that's the nice thing about wild card presidencies like Donald Trump you know you really can't account for a man's ego that's why I'm a MAGA communist. Yeah, for the Palestinian people. Thank you. Trump just starts funding Hamas. Yeah. <sighs> it's all so grim.